we are now on the sixth Sunday of Easter already, uh, and in the past week we have celebrated uh, the life of Saint Matthias, who was the replacement apostle for Judas, of course, so that he would be one of the numbered twelve. Uh, and I was thinking, normally we'd have been sharing all of this in our daily uh, mass, and then of course on the Sunday masses. Uh, and it's, it's it's good practice if you can to look at the lectionary and to look at the readings for mass on those weekdays and on the Sunday, so that you. Continue to steep yourselves in Scripture, which is the spiritual nourishment that uh, the soul needs, of course, the Word of God itself. Uh, of course, also, I know a lot of you uh, do say the morning and evening offices, and um, well, I say my morning office very, very early, so I won't ask you to join me then. But I do say the evening office every day, including Sunday at 5.30pm. And so if you share in that with me, you'll know that we're praying together and it's a sort of spiritual communion, a time when we can get together as church even though we are physically separated. Also, I do uh, enter into the one holy sacrifice of the Mass every day, uh, early in the morning for not only our parish but for the world at this time. So do know that that rhythm of prayer is ongoing and it's ongoing from me to you and for you as well. And I hope your prayers are returned for me. People have actually raised the subject of the, the absence of the sacraments at this time, and there's nothing we can do, of course, about, phys- about not being able to be physically present together to share the Eucharist. That's one of those things that, that's a constraint upon us now. Also, it's been uh, asked about uh, the sacrament of reconciliation, and it's the practice of, of many of you, I know, to make your uh, sacramental confession, which, of course, we can't do at this time. Uh, I would normally have in Holy Week made a a, a confession. I've been unable to do that as well. And there are ways, not around it, but ways to sort of substitute, to fill that gap. Uh, And one of them is it's a good practice daily to consider where we failed God the day before, perhaps, Uh, to think of our sins of thought, word, deed, and also those things we know God's called us to do, which we've said no to. Uh, to actually just reflect on those and to ask God's forgiveness. And that is, of course, making a confession. The other way which I personally find of value is on a Friday to offer the sorrowful mysteries of the rosary as an act of contrition, to consider the journey of Jesus Christ from Gethsemane to his cross on Calvary, dying for my sins. And so I can bring those before him in prayers to Mother Mary uh, with the, the... sorrowful mysteries of the rosary. So those are just a couple of uh, suggestions for you. But in all of this, of course, we're not separated from either the love of God or the presence of God, for he has sent his Holy Spirit to be with us. And this is something which St. John, uh, or Jesus, um, is recorded by St. John, is telling us all about. So I'll read to you the Gospel for today, Sunday, the sixth Sunday of Easter. It's from St. John, chapter 14. Jesus says, If you love me, you will keep my commandments, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you an advocate to be with you forever. This is the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him, because he abides with you, and he will be in you. I will not leave you orphaned. I am coming to you. In a little while the world will no longer see me, but you will see me, because I live, you also will live. On that day you will know that I am in my Father, and you in me, and I in you. They who have my commandments and keep them are those who love me, and those who love me will be loved by my Father and I will love them and reveal myself to them. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Well, despite attempts today to move towards a closer sense of socialisation, many families remain parted from one another at this time, and some feeling they're missing their cherished loved ones. Consequently, Some are feeling bereft of the love that they usually depend on from friends and family. Where conversations, joys, and indeed frustrations were previously shared, now for many they are faced alone 
and the much-needed consolation of family and friends cannot be called upon. Perhaps more than ever, we need to keep our prayer life and our faith alive and active. And the Gospel tells us why. For Jesus says, They who love my commandments are those who love me. And those who love me will be loved by my Father, and I will love them and reveal myself to them. Jesus' promise to be with us still holds true today. If we obey his command to love God and to love our neighbour through prayer and service, we show our love for him. In that, Jesus promises that he is here, revealing himself to us. The Lord has shown us this to be so in the Gospel. He reassures his disciples that when he is to, the time comes for him to depart from their presence, he'll not leave them alone, for he will send them a companion, God himself, the Holy Spirit, to be their guide. He's also talked about his relationship with his Heavenly Father. And in this we see Jesus painting a picture of God as a community of Father, Son and Holy Spirit, where we identify our one God as triune and define our relationship with God as one being drawn into that trinity. Now we're rapidly approaching the church's celebrations of the feast of Pentecost and the Holy Trinity, so I, don't, uh, I won't dwell on those doctrines now, save to say that the Holy Spirit is often often remains sidelined, is misunderstood, is ill-defined. Yet, he is the very spirit of life. He is the spirit of the knowledge and wisdom of God, of understanding, of truth. He is the companion promised to us today by Jesus, both in his time and in ours. Now, as I said, it would be good to keep up the reading of the uh, scriptures which support our gospel I normally talk about the gospel but of course in the reading from the Acts of the Apostles today in today's liturgy St Paul talks of the Athenian people uh, erecting an altar and dedicating it to an unknown God and of course St Paul's quick to use this as a launch pad for mission and ministry and teaching about the God that he knows in Jesus Christ and of what the gospel teaches us about relationships, relationships with one another and relationships with God. And it challenges us to ask the question, how well do we know God? Do we know all about him or do we know him? Jesus is very clear what he wants our relationship to be. It is only if it is intimate that we can know, trust, love and serve our Lord. He tells us that he is in the Father, so the Father is in him, saying, I am in my Father, and you in me, and I in you. God in Jesus tells us that he is not out there somewhere. He is right here with us now. And he says of their Holy Spirit that we know him because he abides in us, and he will be in us. This interpenetration of God with humanity draws us into an intimate relationship with the mystery of God the Trinity, making us part of that divine community so that we are one with them, the many drawn into the one God and the one God given to the many, his church, a fact which no virus can corrupt or any sickness, even death, can separate us from. And Jesus tells us that if we keep his commandments, for to keep them is to be one with him who proclaimed that they were indeed God's will. Now those commandments are to love God and to love our neighbour. The ten commandments essentially consolidated into two. <clears throat> In many ways, although we yearn for our sharing of the liturgy and of the sacraments. In the present separation of church folk from their church buildings, what we see 
is that Jesus is not constrained by the four walls of those places that we so love, revealing himself in the vulnerable and the frail, the weak and the needy, that he may be revealed through acts of love for one another, the things we do as church. He has told us to love one another as I have loved you. We are seeing that love of the Lord more and more despite the current health crisis, in people looking out for each other and in our serving of one another. Despite the odds, the deeds of kindness and care identify the community of St Ambrose Church to be one bound by love, a love of the Lord, and also a community which is embraced by his love for us. The living Christ has enabled us to enter into that love that he has shown to us, in that what we do for others, of course we do for him. This is what it is to be in Christ, that he may be in us, a people of the resurrection, not just of the future, but of the present, of the here and now. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Well, the collect of the day, of course, brings together the essence of all of those readings at Mass, so let me conclude with this collect. Let us pray. God, our Redeemer, you have delivered us from the power of darkness and brought us into the kingdom of your Son. Grant that as by his death he has called us to life, so by his continual presence in us he may raise us to eternal joy. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Hallelujah. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. And now may the light of the resurrected Christ shine brightly before you, that your footsteps may be guided into ways of justice, peace and mercy, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be upon you now and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Let us go in the peace of Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.